I'm going to totally give you permission right now to shut your computer. I'm not going to say anything that you need to really take notes on. If you have questions after the fact, you can ask me. But give yourself a minute right now, a couple minutes, to be present. We're going to talk, yes, about scaling your business. But we're also going to talk about how do you keep your sanity and your family <laughs> and your home and your life in order while you do that. Because a lot of times we start a business and all of a sudden the hours that we're using to keep the business are when we usually are supposed to be sleeping <laughs> or doing other things. And many people in this room are not getting enough sleep. But we'll talk about that. Um, oh, I obviously like this sweater. <laughs> I'm guessing I've officially decided this is my brand. J. Crew, if you're out there, I probably need a couple more. Um, I like like looked at the slide and I was like, oh, wow, yeah, different necklace, different necklace. What am I going to do for jewelry now that Forever 21 is closed? I'm not sure. Um, so these are my partners, Danielle, Francesca, and myself. When, um, I, when I first started Sits Girls back in 2008, it was a community for bloggers. I had been looking online, I had started a blog, and I could not find anybody. I was Googling mom blogger and like the same crappy five people came up over and over again. So I'm a summer camp director by trade, I guess you could say. I, yes, I still run a summer camp while I do Sway. Um, and so my immediate thing was, okay, people want to be connected. Like, let's figure out how to do that in a positive way. So I started my blog. Three months later, I was like, hey, I'm going to do a huge giveaway. It was a summer, it was a summer survival giveaway, and it was a bounce house and a digital camera and a blog makeover. And I'm telling you, we had hundreds of bloggers show up from out of nowhere to join Sits Girls, which really became something cool because the first week, one of the blogs that we featured was Scary Mommy. Uh, isn't that crazy? Like Jill was like one of our first and she was just starting out with the rest of us and now that's like a huge site. Um, and it just grew. The whole idea was you get featured if you support other women. And that has been the idea all along with everything that I've done. Um, and then that turned into, how are we going to get together and see each other in person? And so you guys are going to be blown away at my naming capabilities. It was called Sitzcation. Um, and it was in Vegas. I should be naming nail polishes for a living, I know. Um, and it was so fun. We all got together and I realized, okay, this is a need. So then it turned into Bloggy Boot Camp because people would maybe know what it meant also. Such a great name. Um, what it was and what it meant. And so that turned into Sway Group. So these are my partners. When I look at this picture, I always think of the same quote, which you probably wouldn't think that Lauren Conrad was like a feminist uh, visionary, but she is. Um, in recent radio interview, she was asked by like this really cheeky male radio host, what is your favorite position? And she said CEO. And you know what? Those are the girls we're raising. And um, this picture, I always think of that when I look at this picture because we're not three CEOs by title, but we're three CEOs. Um, okay, this is what we're going to start. Every single time I speak, this is where we start. I'm going to go ahead and apologize to the men in the room. I usually speak mostly to women, so I'm probably going to let you in on a couple secrets <laughs> of women in general where you're going to be like, wow, really? Um, but we sometimes have a really hard time for asking what we want. We're very concerned about what everybody else wants and how we can fill the needs of everybody else. But I have to tell you, if you're here today and you spent the money to be here today and you're putting time away from your family or your favorite restaurant or your roller derby hobby to do this, you need to know what you want. And it's not the next sponsored blog post. There's an, a bigger picture. What does this effort and energy leading to? And we're going to talk about how we're going to plan that out. People used to say, and me included, what's your five-year plan? Okay, you're talking to somebody who got knocked up at 40. <laughs> Surprise! 
and my five-year plan went out the door. So I have a 19-year-old and a three-year-old. <laughs> Same husband. I, that's the first question I always get. They're always like, oh, is it the same husband? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you should have seen my 15-year-old's face when we told him. Because that was like, oh. <laughs> oh, it was so good. I wish I taped it. It was such a good moment. Um, but really sitting down and thinking about, OK, yes, in five years, I want to be independent, independently wealthy. In five years, I want to be working four hours a day. In five years, I want to be making $200,000 a year. Whatever that five-year goal is, great. But we need to break it down to 18 to 24 months because things happen and life changes. And it is so OK to decide one day when you sit down to do this, and we're going to talk about it, you know what, this isn't, the, this isn't the goal anymore. I think we get very committed, especially as women, as we've put time and money into something, we have a really hard time letting it go even when it isn't fulfilling our purpose or our passion or all those key words <laughs> that people like to throw around, when those aren't being fulfilled anymore, we're, we get nervous like we failed. Changing your mind and pivoting in another direction is never failure. It's knowing yourself, it's knowing your life circumstances, and it's responding to what feels right to you. So there's things that you need to consider when you're making this plan. Finances, what are you spending? What are you making? I like to set this up in almost like an Excel Ooh, spreadsheet where you have like across the top finances, staff, products, opportunities, lifestyle. And then down the bottom, what are the dates and what are the specifics that we're going to hit? So in finances, how many of you guys know how much it costs you every month to do what you're doing? Okay, that's really good. Three years ago, no one raised their hand when I asked that question. It is super important that you know how much this is costing you. Not only how much is my hosting, how much is my VA, but how much is my babysitter? How much is the preschool? How much are all the things that I'm paying for to do for this? Because those should account into it. When you think about going to a conference, your budget should include your parking and the gas and everything that it's taking for you to get there. How much money do I want to be making? This is important to know. How much money do you want to be making every month? And what are the streams of income that are going to get you there? Because multiple streams of income is the future. If you're not already doing it, start thinking about what other ways can I be leveraging this platform, leveraging my expertise, leveraging all, I mean, there are so many things that you guys have in this room. There's not really a degree in influencer, right, in college yet. But it is in this room. I mean, if you look at the amount of hours that have been put into understanding SEO and photo photography and the back end of things, you guys are experts. What does your staff look like? How many of you pay someone to do work with you? OK, great. Again, three years ago, that would have been really minimal. Um, we're going to talk more about that. Products. How many of you have a product line, an ebook, anything? OK. OK, good. If, if those are things you haven't thought about yet, I highly recommend considering what kind of webinar could I do? What kind of ebook could I write? How can I scale this business, this blog, into making other money? I took a blog, and five, six, seven, ten, <laughs> eight years later, I am partner at a multi million dollar company. And I didn't have my degrees in history, you guys. I don't get one. <laughs> And tell your kids not to get one either, especially at USC. Come on. Um, but seriously, you want to think about where, how does this blog work for me? How does this Instagram account work for me? How do I make more money? Those are products, opportunities, speaking, collaborating, a book, et cetera. You would be shocked at the ability to get a book deal if you already have an audience. Because they're not given money anymore for people to promote their books. You can self-publish now. What does that look like? Do you have enough blog posts? Do you have enough information? Is there a topic you wrote about enough to turn into a book, even if it's an ebook, a how to book? Um, do you have people that you could be collaborating with to do online webinars about photography? Or um, people, I know, I know a couple personally that lives near me that started a, a um, webinar on how to build a blog. And they were so smart, they went straight to Instagram and Facebook ads, and they're making over $200,000 a month. 
I know you guys, I got in the wrong business. They put that up and I was like, what just happened in here? They got smart, they saw the door, they went in early, and it now works for themselves. The webinar just gets watched over and over and over again. And then they have add-ons, and then they have personal coaching, right? Now, speaking is not for everybody. And I don't recommend that you do it if you're not comfortable on stage. Like, if you're not me, um, the people in this room have heard me speak before know I so, this is like, I so love it. I so love it. Um, but there are so many opportunities out there, even if it's just to sit on a panel. How can you start getting yourself out there to be seen as an expert so that you can push the product that you're creating to get you to the goal of the income? And I may be assuming everybody's goal is income. I F-bomb love money. I love it. <laughs> and I think women should be more open about talking about it and about being really clear that money actually, should, there should be no guilt attached to taking money unless you're like selling like puppies you stole. But besides that, <laughs> money is like a great thing. And we should not only be charging each other, we should not be giving guilt to each other when we're charged, right? Can I tell you, yes. Your, your work has value. And when someone says, can I take you for a cup of coffee so you can teach me how to be a blogger, you say, my rate's $100 an hour. Let me know when you're available. <laughs> that is the answer. Because you guys, you're giving it away. It's being given away every day. So this is what gets left out of most business plans. And I think that's because a lot of times men develop business plans. Again, I, I so love my husband. I'm not a man basher. However, running a business as a woman seems to me, I haven't been a man I, in a past life possibly, but I don't know, now no. I know what it's like to run a business as a woman and it seems to be different. I'm just gonna put it out there. It seems like there's a little bit of a difference. So what I will say is we leave out lifestyle. What does my life look like while I'm running this business? Because if it's 12 hours of work at, at work on the blog and then six hours of work at home, and then two more hours of helping with homework, that isn't really a lifestyle plan. It's a hamster wheel that gets you like pneumonia, I'm pretty sure. So what does your lifestyle look like? Please don't leave this out. And I have to tell you guys, if you're married, if you're in a relationship and you have a spouse or a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a partner, whatever it is, that lifestyle needs to include time with them. It is the number one thing that is being cut out of, of life when we take on these businesses, we're cutting that first. And I will tell you, I've been married 21 years and it is so important to your success that the people in your house are on board. And so we're gonna talk about more about what it's like to get them on board. But if your business plan at home, if one, if you haven't done one, please go home and do one. But if it doesn't include what your life looks like, for me, I don't wanna work more than four hours a day most days. I find that it's just best. Um, hey, listen, have a goal, right? Dream big. Um, what's holding you back? There's a lot of things holding a lot of people back in this room. We're going to jump into them. Um, is it fear? Are you scared that if you, that if you do this, it's not going to work? It's going to fail. There's too many people already doing it. Um, I haven't had success before. I don't know where I'm going to get the money. Um, I don't have support doing it. My husband will never agree. My wife will never agree. Um, all these things, right? They come up as a list. Finances. Is it money? When I started Bloggy Boot Camp, Sitzcation, when I started Sitzcation, I did not tell my husband. Um, he is a very big saver type person. I like to say if, if we weren't married, I'd be living in Paris with really great shoes and he'd be living in the same apartment with like $5 million in the bank. Um, but we're a good match because I help him come out and he helps me like bring it down. Um, but what is, what is the finances look like? I went to a hotel and I was like, okay, I'm gonna have a conference here. Like, okay, that's a $3,000 deposit. Like, $3,000? He will never agree to $3,000. So I am not saying you should do this. I just wanna tell you my story. Um, <laughs> I had a credit card. I always thought having my own credit card separate from everything else would be a really good idea in case I had to run in the middle of the night. Um, I watched a lot of after school specials. <laughs> um, my husband is a sweetheart. Um, but you know, they always tell you like, have something for you. Okay. So I had this credit card and I was like, okay. And 
I really told myself, I said, if I lose this $3,000, like it's gone, like I don't sell the tickets and it's gone, what happens? Like realistically, what happens is my husband's pretty pissed, maybe we don't go on vacation, but I wasn't gonna take food off my family's table, right? Like I was not, it was a risk, but it was not a risk that would, like we lose our house over. So I paid the $3,000 and I'm telling you, if you've never seen someone hustle, I was selling those tickets like my life kind of depended on it, <laughs> right? Like I was like, oh, you guys gotta come, you gotta go. Anybody in here that went? Katie, oh yeah, it was great, it was a great day. Um, we had a really good time and I, I was so glad I did it. I think I broke even on the first one and then I decided, hey, we're gonna turn this into a series, I'm gonna travel around the country and by the time it was established, I only charged $100 for the tickets and I, I did them so cheaply. I'm telling you guys some of the hotels. I mean, I think at one point there were like a roof leaked on us. It was not fancy, but I wanted it available to people who could get a yes of 100 bucks. They didn't have to stay overnight. It was local. We went all around the country and the tickets could mostly cover the expenses. And that, by the third year, I was making like $100,000 in profit, which is pretty great. And I remember that first check that had like more than three zeros. I laid that motherfucker on the counter and I was like, yes! And he walked in, he was like, what? I'm like, I know. Still has no idea about the credit card. I have never told him. And I, I've never invited him to hear me speak, ever probably because I just dropped the MFR, um, he'd be mortified. Um, but that is, that is what happened. I did it, I hustled and I saw a need and I stayed true to my brand and it's totally doable. So finances could have held me back and I made a decision on how much I could, a risk I could afford to take. Relationships, okay, this is a, this is a really big one because I feel like most women are actually, this is what they're held back from. And I want to tell you that um, relationships are vital. And I think we assume a lot of things about people that we're in relationships with that aren't true. Um, there's a lot of times there's an assumption that our partner wouldn't want us to take on something else. A lot of times there's an assumption that our partner wouldn't think that we would be successful um, that they wouldn't be willing to take on more work. And that, that is true in some cases. I have to tell you that most partners, and I'm, I'm gonna say men just for husbands, for the majority of the people in the room, I have found that most would very much like to help and support. They just need to know how. Because saying to your husband, I need your help, will get you the dishwasher emptied, maybe. <laughs> Right? That's like the universal code. Oh, and then you walk in, I'm like, I said, I need help. He's like, I emptied the dishwasher. <laughs> and you're like, okay, thanks. Um, so this is what I recommend. I recommend you sit down and write out what would actually be really helpful for you that he could do. He just needs specifics. He cannot read your mind. And then you're mad when he doesn't. It's like so crazy to watch myself do it. <laughs> um, and this was a very big wake-up call for me and changed our whole marriage and the whole dynamic. And he was so on board when I really said, okay, what I need is for you on Sunday mornings to take my son to the park for four hours and I'm gonna get all my content done. Like, whatever that looks like for you that's doable, I'm telling you, you will very likely get a yes. They will be so happy to be on board and helping. They want to see you succeed. They, they want the money too. They're happy to see you succeed. So there is another little piece to this that we probably need to talk about for, I don't know, maybe like 10% of you in the room. You've asked for help, you've gotten help, but it wasn't done right. <laughs> so guess what? People don't come back for more help when the first help wasn't right. So if that's you, if you really are honest with yourself and you think, oh God, I do reload the dishwasher after I ask him to do it. Um, or, you know, one time I was gone and my husband is, is amazing. He, he was fortunate to take six weeks off with my son 20 years ago. So he was able to really get dad on early. And then with my daughter, we both worked from home and it's been crazy, crazy great. But I have seen pictures of her dressed only in a onesie. 
at the mall where people could see. And I'm like, do I say a word? I do not. Because he is the dad and he is the one who is, who is with his child, not babysitting. He is the one with his child at that time. The decisions that he makes while I'm not there are his decisions to make. I do not comment on them. Her life is safe, right? For the most part. <laughs> Outside of us being like, you know, ridiculed by neighbors for dressing her like that. And then he can't do her hair. Like, those are just the two things. I see pictures and I'm like, oh. He's, he's, he says his hands break her little rubber bands. <laughs> so he just puts in like 50 clips. Um, a dad, I know. That's good. Um, so relationships also come down to the Facebook groups you're in. If you're in a Facebook group that you don't leave, you don't, feel good when you leave, please get out of it immediately. Like we did high school. I don't need any notes in my locker. Like this is not, you should be around. Like I feel, I was talking to, um, last night I think it was Brandy, and I, I, we were talking about boundaries and that one of the best gifts of being in your late 30s and early 40s is that you figure out boundaries. And you are so, you're amazed at what your life can be like when you stop saying yes to everything and that you, you give yourself boundaries of what you're comfortable doing and not comfortable doing. And those are so important. If you have a friend that is not out of their mind excited for your success, they are not your friend, period. They are not. And if your family isn't out of their, your mind success, like your sister-in-law or whoever it may be, I'm just... Nothing personal. Um, you limit interaction. You, you say to yourself, what can I safely do with this person? Because some people, we, don't, we, we can't always cut everybody out completely, but we can keep ourselves safe with boundaries. You know, I, I, I don't engage about stuff like that. Um, and I think it's really important. If you, if you, I had a woman when I spoke about this a couple months ago, and she raised her hand in the middle and she was crying. And she said, I am so grateful my husband provides such a wonderful life. I'm so grateful and I feel so guilty asking for him to support my dream. And I looked at her and I said, you can be grateful and have no guilt attached to that. They are two separate feelings. You can be so grateful for the people that show up in your life but not feel bad when you don't give them a job, which we're going to get to because that's a whole nother story. But these relationships are important, and I encourage you, if you, we, I actually encourage a family meeting. If you have kids that are older than four, they can sit down with you, and you can say, okay, mom needs help with her work. And they can take on jobs, like understanding office hours. How many of your family knows your office hours at home? Okay, that is the number one thing that changed my life. They know that mom is not available. If that door is closed, I even had a sign when my son was little. He knew not to come into that office. I remember one time he was crying silently <laughs> because I was on the phone. Yeah, I mean, it's sad, but I mean, he got me home. I was home. Um, he can't have it all. I got to raise grit, resilient kids with grit. Silent crying is awesome. Um, my daughter is more like the type that walks in, just shuts your computer and stares you down in the face. Um, but it's really important that you, this, is, this matters. This isn't just a hobby. It's really not. Stop treating it like one. You deserve office hours. You deserve time. You deserve time to create. You deserve money. You deserve all these things, but you have to go get them. They don't just come to you. You have to go get them. Um, and, and imposter syndrome. This is like a new buzzword, and I think it's so great we have a word for it now because everybody here really does have it. I am so confident, you guys. Like, I was born confident. I, I don't even give credit to my parents because my sister is not. So she would die. If you ever handed her a microphone and said get on stage, she'd be like, I will, no. I will, like, slide down a razor blade into acid before I get that microphone. And I'm like, give it to me. I would walk around my house with this, no joke. I really would. Um, I think there's a reason no one's gotten one for my three-year-old because they're like, yeah, that, no. Mm -mm. Um, but I think it's really important to talk about it. My imposter syndrome is my weight. I will stop myself because I think that people can't, won't 
take advice from someone who doesn't have their weight in control. That is a story I've told myself. Because society's told me that, to be honest. That I'm lazy or that I'm not a hard worker, all those things, right? And I have been heavy my whole life outside of a swim team in high school. And I don't know if anyone else was around for Fen Fen, but that was a good year. <laughs> I met my husband that year. You probably won't be surprised to know. He's like, why are you taking those pills? I'm like, oh, to keep my weight down. He's like, you don't need them. I'm like, watch. <laughs> um, hold my drink. <laughs> so, ooh, um, so that, if for me, I, you know what I do? I, I have to say I honestly do this. When I hear it creep in, I say to myself, stop talking about your friend like that. Stop talking about your friend like that. I am my own best friend, I am my own best advocate. I have to look out for me, and I have to take care of my mental well-being and self. I also have a super hot husband, which helps, um, because I'm like look, at, like, look at him, like, you can't be that bad, like, he's so hot. Um, whenever I have, like, a girl, I call them girls when they get nasty, they're women otherwise, but um, if I have a girl get nasty online to me, I'll be like, my husband is so much hotter than it's like the little story I tell myself in my head. But whatever it is that gets you through, but look your imposter syndrome in the face. Maybe you don't have a college degree. Maybe you don't know how to code. Maybe you um, just started doing this. Maybe people are older than you. Maybe people, everybody else is young. There's every one of us has something. Mine, I just feel like, gets decided right away because, you know, every model that we see of an empowering woman, like online, who's like selling her deal, she also sells like in CrossFit or whatever. And that's just not me. Like Kim earlier today, she was like, I mean, I said, I'm like, can you believe JLo's 50? She's like, yeah, but like if you had a trainer and you had, I said, if I had a trainer, I would talk them into drinking with me. It has nothing to do with money. <laughs> Money has nothing, if I, I have enough money to be skinny if money is the problem. <laughs> like, it's not the answer. So what I have to do instead is say, this is still a piece of me that I'm working on. And own it. And say, this is a journey I'm still on. It hasn't been perfected yet. Will I have a great body one day? I mean, maybe. Maybe. Yes, I already do. Thank you. That is the voice. Yes, this body carried two babies. Um... And, and it so write down when you get home, what is my imposter syndrome? Because if you ignore it, it's holding you back. You're, you're, it's a silent voice in your head that you're pushing down and pushing down. You have to look it straight in the face, in my opinion, and say, uh-uh, not today. Today, you're not getting me. And just take it day by day, but stop the voice in your head. Don't talk about my friend like that. Um, is scaling the right move? I told you guys about Bloggy Bootcamp. We were bringing in, profiting $150,000 a year, splitting it two ways, $75,000 a year to do show up five times. That didn't need to scale, right? If I had started scaling that business, I actually would have ended up making less. And there is a time that I feel like that's worth it. If you can sell down the line, making less money now is worth it. But I didn't see that as a possibility. So eventually, things changed. People weren't sponsoring um, conferences like they used to be because there were 700 of them. Um, and, you know, we let it go. And that was fine. But that would not have been the right business to scale because we were doing it just fine and the profit was enough. So everybody might be telling you, oh, you got to scale. What's next? What's next? If you're, if you're meeting your, quote, goals or your lifestyle is where you want it right now, congratulations. And I mean that sincerely. We don't always need to be on to the next. If it's working right now, sure, think about things might pop up. Oh, yeah, I could do that. I could do that. But if you've got a nice thing going that's allowing you the time and freedom that you want and the money, you don't need to stress about making it bigger. It's not always better. So while I am scaling right now and have scaled my business from two employees to 30, I'm telling you some days it really sucks. It's not, it's not for everybody. It's not always the right move. So think about that as well. The M word, money. I think Channing Tatum smells like money. I've always wanted to find out. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, maybe it's because like Magic Mike, the money on him. I don't know. But I just have this like, like feeling. I love it. I just love it. It like drives me. I'm not good with it, spending it, but I love, I love the chase of it. 
I love like when you're like, oh yeah, the check came in. Oh yeah, it hit the bank. I just love it. It's like such a drive for me. Um, all right, partnerships. How many of you guys in here are in a partnership? Is anybody? Because I don't want to spend too much time. Okay, a couple people. Um, how many of you are in partnerships with people that you're in a relationship with also? Okay, so those are, so am I. My husband and I own a summer camp together. We run it together. That could be its own whole talk, am I right? <laughs> the people doing it. It is a whole different set of, of circumstances. But um, this is all I'm going to say about it since it's not a big thing. People might approach you to become partners back in like, Probably 2011, all these bloggers were jumping on LLCs together and S Corps to like do something. Don't do that. Like those are, those are actual businesses that are like real. What you wanna do is have a joint venture or an agreement between two corporations. You don't need to be on it together because to unwind that is a lot. Um, you wanna make sure that you have very clear expectations. If things fall apart, what happens? And you need to do those while you get along, right? You can't decide that later. So operating agreements, these are all just things to keep in the back of your mind if you get approached. You want an operating agreement that says, hey, if this dissolves, this is how much the parties, percentages the parties take, this is who owns the domain, this is who owns the, whatever it is. That's really important. Um, I had five, there were five partners when Sway started, there's now three. One was very easy, very, quick. Um, the other was heartbreaking, is all I'll say, and took a long time with attorneys that cost $500, um, and took months and months and months. And the operating agreement was there, but somebody can decide that the operating agreement doesn't match what they feel is the right solution. And so then the operating agreement is what ends up being part of mediation or whatever you go through. Um, all I want to say about that is when it first came up that it wasn't going to be easy, I almost backed out of the company. Like, I just, I went, you know, my heart was broken. I was hurt. And I remember the attorney said to me, like, this is business. You let the attorney handle it, and you keep doing your job. And that's what we did. And we made it through, and it was fine. And I'm so glad somebody told me that because... I had no experience with anything like that. And I thought, oh my God, lawsuit, oh my God, court. And you just, you get an attorney that you trust and you keep working. You keep moving towards the goal and you let them give you updates and you let them handle what you don't need to handle. That's what you're paying them $500 an hour for. Um, investors, does anyone here have investors? Oh, if you wanna raise your hand. Anybody interested in getting an investor? Okay. Um, we have always gone the route of no investment because well, I'm a control freak, and so are the other two chicks <laughs> on the company with me. Um, there are definitely the right kind of investors that come in quietly and, you know, give you some money and help you get going. And then there are, like, private equity firms that, like, want spreadsheets, and you're down to the penny. So you want to be really thoughtful and d definitely get outside consulting if you're going to go that route. Um, loans is probably for us. Um, something that we decided not to do. However, a lot of people that I know were able to get loans from family because to go to the next level, you often have to have some money in hand. It's really hard to hire people when you need them if you don't have some funds available because you need the people before the work has to be completed, right? So that can be tricky. And you might have someone in your family or friend circle that can say, hey, would you be interested? in a loan or interested in investing, and, and you might get a yes. Um, I'd be very clear with the expectations of that. Um, and even though they're friends, a handshake isn't what does it. You get a lawyer involved, you have both sides get counsel. A line of credit is what we did. So a line of credit um, is such a great tool because you, it's there when you need it, but you're only paying on it, at least in our circumstance, you're only paying on it when you use it. And what we did was we went to, I, 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 ha, I highly recommend, I hope you all have business bank accounts outside of your personal account, um, but that you bank locally at a credit union or a bank local where you can walk in and meet with the bank VP. Well, that's what we did, and we were able to secure a really significant line of credit that has saved our ass a number of times. When you're in a position where you have to start paying other people or you need to 
bring in merchandise that you need to pay for before it's sold. A line of credit is a great way to do it. Yes, we put up our houses for collateral. That's pretty standard. If you don't have money, none of us were worried about, you know, the loan being called, the line of credit being called in. They give you time. But I really recommend banking locally and going in and meeting that person, taking them to lunch, telling them what you do because it's a much easier yes. I mean, like at a Chase or Wells Fargo, it's not going to happen. Totally different ballgame. Um, I just want to touch on investing in yourself and your business. People talk about this a lot. Oh, you need to invest in yourself, you need to invest in yourself, and you 100% need to invest in yourself. But what I'm seeing a lot of lately is people, women in particular, white women in particular, um, spending all this money to go to like a one day event that's all about empowerment in like the Staples Center or like some big place. And it's, it's a really expensive ticket to have someone tell you like, you're so great, go wash your face. Um, <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say about that. Um, <laughs> I know some people are with me on that. I, I feel like I don't, I, 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 I've heard this quote recently and it said, stop, stop following people who have never been where you're going. And I was like, that is the best piece of business advice I could give to anyone just starting out. There are people who are selling books and selling out theaters and whatever that always had money. They were rich before they did it. That's not most people's same story. So I think it's really important that you find, if you're looking to really invest in yourself like a business coach, find someone who has a similar journey to you and has already done the work. I can't tell you the number of business coaches I see. I can't find anything they ever actually did business-wise. <laughs> like, I'm like, what, what, you started a successful business coaching business? I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> Um, you know, you want to find and seek out people. And, and I, think, I think there are definitely really great coaches that are men, but I think if you are a woman and you can find a woman business coach, there's, a, there's kind of more of an understanding in a lot of ways of what, when you, when you start a business, you don't suddenly stop the rest of your life as a woman. Like, you don't stop being a mom, you don't stop being the person that drives to school or whatever it is in your family, whatever it is in your family. This just gets added to it, right? And so I think it's really important that when you look for a business coach, um, one, you have to look at the money. I, I, a blogger that I was talking to, she's like, yeah, it's $3,000 a month. And I was like, okay, wow, what are you getting? It's, you, you've got to be able to, to say $3,000 a month, if you're upping your game to the point of making $6,000 more a month, hell yeah, that makes sense. But just jumping on it, um, just because you've, you've heard it's what's next or you need the help, you really, really want to take time and ask for recommendations um, for other people because just seeing like a Facebook ad or hearing a speaker and then, you know, hiring them, which you can totally hire me, um, <laughs> but it has to be a fit. I'm not everybody's fit. I'm definitely not everybody's cup of tea, right? Like if you don't want cursing on our call, it's probably not a good fit because um, it's going to happen. But I think that really think about, okay, what is this conference going to cost me? From parking to babysitting to time away from my kids. And we were having a conversation last night in the bar, and we were talking about how time just leaves while we're on Instagram, right? And I said, would you spend less time on Instagram if, you, if your hourly rate is $100 an hour and you're spending two hours a day scrolling Instagram? If you started looking at it that way, you would stop doing it. Because your time is so valuable. If it is not feeding your family, your bank account, or your soul, the answer is no, period. Every single time. You ask yourself, with, I don't care if it's, do you want to be room mom? You don't. <laughs> if any of you have older kids, you know everybody is like punching each other in the face to be room mom in kindergarten, and by fifth grade, everybody's like, no thanks. But it's everything from, will you host the auction this year? all the way to, you know, scrolling Instagram, whatever it is. Like, if it doesn't feed your family, your bank account, or your soul, it is no. And start doing it with every decision. Even people who ask you to lunch. Because spending time at lunch with someone you kind of like, uh, 
Not worth it, because you think like, oh, if I don't, maybe their kid won't play with my kid. It doesn't matter. Your kids are fine. They're navigating their own friendships without you, believe it or not, probably better than you are. Um, so just start asking yourself these questions and valuing your time. And we have to stop reacting to everything. Take it in and make a decision instead of a reaction, right? Like, I live with a teenager. I have learned to go, well, I didn't see that coming. Instead of, are you fucking kidding me? Like, there are two different reactions, right? One is a reaction, one is like, oh, this is new. This is new, okay, what are we gonna do? How do I outsmart him? And I make it like, not about me, and like about, okay, what's the next step? Like, what's this game him and I are playing teenage chess? He's coming at me with everything he's got. Like, yelling at me for a dent in the car that he put there. This is good stuff, like, this guy's magic. Right? And instead of losing my mind and reacting because I'm so tired and I'm so overdone, I can say, ooh, okay. Mom needs to, let me, I need to think about this. I, I want to be very thoughtful before I talk about this with you. And then he's like, oh, God, what is she going to say? <laughs> um, but it's really great. So I think that really thinking about what you want and making decisions about who do I want to be in a year. You will spend so much more quality time with your family and so much more time doing what you love and feeling unstressed if you just stop saying yes to everything that doesn't suit you. If it doesn't get you to making $10,000 a month, if it, whatever the goal is, if it doesn't get you, and by the way, getting a trip to Disney isn't a goal. I'm just gonna like put that out there. You earn the money and if you wanna go to Disney for fun, you go. But that is not like, I gotta get this. Okay, we're not doing that anymore. That was like so 2010. Um, you want to have these conversations with yourself in your head and slow down. Not every email needs a response in an hour. And stop saying you're sorry when you don't respond in an hour. You need time to think. I, I do not keep my email on all day. I check my email every two hours because otherwise I get so distracted I never get anything done. People can wait a second. Give them your best self by giving yourself time to be present when you make a response. Your kids would much rather have you present for an hour than home all day, like on your phone, half-assing it. They really, really would. When I'm with my kid, I put my phone down, and I get on the floor, and I play, and th that's what she's gonna remember. That's all she really wants. And then she knows when mom's doors close, cry silently. That's how it works. <laughs> all right, building your dream team. How many of you guys are thinking about you're in a position to hire somebody? You're feeling ready, okay. All right, the first thing you wanna write down on a piece of paper, not right now, I can send you this. I wanna keep your attention on me, obviously. Um, if I didn't have to blank, I could spend more time blank. The first blank is what you hire for, the second blank is what makes you money. There are certain things that only you can do that make the money, right? There are certain things that take your expertise, your creativity, your eye, whatever it is, those are the things you keep. The stuff that, that doesn't need you, that someone else could do, if you're making $100 an hour doing your beautiful photography, spend 20, 50, I live in California, so it's like $100 an hour on a VA, but um, spend $20 an hour on someone that can do the things you don't wanna do because you will just free up so much time. And I think somebody maybe already talked about um, employment, I can't remember, but I really recommend that you hire first them as an independent contractor. Check with your state, check with your attorney. But an independent contractor just means, hey, you're gonna do this work for three months, this is what it looks like. If at the end you can politely say, hey, the contract's up, thank you so much for your work and move on. If you hire them as like a full-blown employee, you've gotten like in yourself into this whole thing of letting them go and unemployment and all these things. So make sure it's gonna work and hire them as an independent contractor. Um, we're not gonna hire our sister-in-law, okay? Because she needs a job and she's kind of good at taking pictures on Instagram. Um, one, I, and this is coming from someone who my sister has worked for me for the last 15 years in various capacities. However, as women, we tend to think if we find some success, it's our responsibility to bring everybody along that we've ever met. All of our friends that are like, oh my God, you need someone, I need a job, could I just do this? And then they wanna work like 10 to one. 
right? And, and like do all the things for you. I highly recommend at least until you get really good at hiring, you do not hire people that you really know. Um, a casual acquaintance that you see as a hard worker, my partner Fran, we did not start off as friends. We were bloggers and I was doing bloggy boot camp, and she was like four months pregnant and she was working the room for me. What do you need? How can I help you? And I was like, this is what I need. I know my skill set. One, they can't want a microphone because that would be ugly. I need to have all the attention all the time. Two, I can't make a list and follow it worth a crap. Like, can't. Ooh. And scene. Um, you want to hire for all the things that you're not good at. It's common sense. You get it. I really, though, I feel like I, I is there an echo? So many women that are hiring like friends or a neighbor or, oh yeah, my, my husband's cousin needs a job. It is not your job to employ people that don't have a skill set that you need um, at all. It's not your job. And if they don't want to come to your house for the holidays after that, okay. That's best for everyone, isn't it? Um, so what you're, what you're going to do is look for someone that has the skill set you need, interview them, Ask them to give you a sample of whatever the work is they're going to be doing so you can see it. Like, if you're having someone who's going to edit for you, you need to make sure that they can edit, right? If you're going to have someone who is running social media for you, you want to see what they've done. Um, and, and you can find people to help you with that stuff. But you definitely, it's more than just a gut feeling. Oh, I really like you. You don't even need to, like, really love them. They need to have the skill set that you don't have. I really recommend, too, in the startup type business, like with SITS, it's 20 employees, or SITS, Sway Group, it's 20 employees. We are all scrappy AF. Like, if I need to fold boxes, I'm folding boxes. If she needs to, to you know, run to Target and get the supplies for the shoot, she's doing it. We all understand it's a buy-in that, yes, we have our jobs, but overall, our main job is that Sway Group is a success, and that takes all hands on deck. Because running your own business, when you start to have to feed other people's families, like that's on your mind, it, gets, it keeps you up at night. And so hiring the people that you feel like are bought into your culture, and you should be very clear on what your culture is before you hire anybody too. What is the expectation on the weekends? What is the expectation? What's the pay gonna be? Um, for us, we found that women who have children who are elementary school aged are a great fit for us because we can't necessarily pay as much as they could get in the marketplace, but they can work from home and we 100% support every family activity, no question. You wanna be room mom, you need to take Thursday off to go to the play, there's no question. There's a dentist appointment, there's no question. And that is of so much value to them, the support, that we have people who have cut their pay in half to come work for us because it, it's that important to them. Um, is anybody here like wondering about em actual employees and health benefits and all that kind of stuff? I'll talk really quickly about it at the end because I wish I had known more and I do know now, so I'll share that at the very end. Um, human resources, I highly recommend hiring a part, a, um, contractor who does human resources to conduct your interviews for you before you interview them. It's just one person who can do it hourly and get through people and say, these are the three people that I think are really the best fit. And it also, it saves you so much time. And they know what they're looking for too. If they're good at their job, they'll ask you very specific questions and then they'll design interview questions around it. If you need the name of somebody, I have someone who is amazing. Um, she has a, a master's in industrial psychology and she's fantastic. Um, how you find the perfect person and promoting within. Promoting within is one of the biggest challenges I think for small businesses because people will be really great at their job and then we just promote them. But they're not ready or they don't have the skill set to manage other people. Managing other people is a really set, a really specific set of skills that most people actually don't have with, especially if they haven't had any training. So I would be, and it can lead to hurt feelings. And so I think a, a um, very, a very open conversation with a person who you think might be w wanting the next position to say, hey, these are the things I would need to see before that happened. Totally appropriate. It's totally appropriate. We don't promote people based on how long they've worked for us because it should be based on skill. And you might have a new employee who's got the skills. And, and I think that if you run a company with transparency and fairness, people will understand it. And if they don't and they leave, that's okay too. 
Sometimes that's really hard for us to take, that someone left our company. It's okay. It happens. Sometimes not everything's a fit. All right, this is my last slide. <sighs> let, me end, let me end good. Um, I want to give you a couple things to think about. The first is called Vistage. Is anybody here in Vistage? Okay, Vistage is a professional group for CEOs and key men, so C-suite people, or business owners. I'm going to start by telling you it's pricey. However, it is so worth the investment if you can do it. Um, you meet once a month with other CEOs and local people who own businesses where you live, and the information that I have gotten from being in those meetings, in my particular meeting in San Diego, there were people that were CEOs of $20 million companies, all the way down to people that were CEOs of million dollar companies. And the information that the CEO of a $20 million company has is worth sitting in the room. And they ask really hard questions, and they really keep you on track to your goals and your business needs, and it's just a really great place um, to talk about. Now, I will say there aren't a lot of women in the room when you go sometimes. Um, <laughs> I, was, I, I was at one, and we had a speaker, and the speaker was talking about um, decision fatigue and how, you know, when you come home from the office and your wife asks you what you want for dinner, you can't even answer her because you have so much decision fatigue. <laughs> and I was like, let me tell you about decisions. Uh, and then we had a very enlightening conversation about the decisions your wife has li likely made that day, including do I get involved with the bully on the playground? Do I talk to the teacher? Wh whose dentist appointment is tomorrow? There's a lot of decisions that are getting made in a day, and the last thing she wants from you is I don't know when it comes to dinner. And you know what? He was very, he was, I mean, the whole group, I'm sure, was just like, oh, there she goes, the angry woman. <laughs> Um, but you know what? It's my job to call that out. If, I'm, if I've made it to that room, it's my job to change the culture in that room and get them to think. It really is. And um, after, after I said my TED talk, <laughs> he said, you know what? My wife came to hear me speak two weeks ago, and when I got home, she said exactly the same thing, and I, for, I haven't updated the presentation, and you're right, it's going in tonight when I get home. And I was like, good! Because it's not, it's not one-sided. However your life works. My husband's a stay-at-home dad. He was an LAPD detective. I know, super hot. Um, <laughs> for years. And then he, he left that so I could follow my dream. And he, I will never, I could never be more grateful for him for doing that. And he also got the benefit of coaching baseball, travel baseball, which takes a ton of time. And spend those years with my son and it was a family decision. We took a six-figure pay cut to make. We moved out of California to do it. It was the best decision we ever made as a family. We stopped running the rat race, and we decided we were going to live off a certain income so that we could be together. And then I, you know, exploded and became famous and rich. And it, just kidding. <laughs> I'm just putting it out into the universe. Um, a fractional CFO. CFOs are expensive to have on board. However, you can hire what's called a fractional CFO. It's a CFO that comes in and looks at your books once a quarter. We would not be in business had we not brought in a CFO. We did not understand well enough money coming in, money going out, liabilities, all these things. Um, so there are some really great ones. There's also an influencer on Instagram. She goes by Lovely, Lovely Financials. I've met her in person. Follow her on Instagram, and if you're looking for someone maybe who's not quite a CFO level, but just to help you with your expenses and income, consider hiring her. She is um, great. She's what? She's yours? Okay. Hello, Marie. This is her. She's great, right? I met her at a conference, and I was so impressed and so blown away. Um, and even her Instagram is just helpful, the stories that she does, but she helps you stay on track financially. She's like a financial coach. But if you're running a business that has like employees and income that's coming in and out, I, a, a fractional CFO I highly recommend. Um, if you need one, you can also feel free to email me. Um, an accountant, an accountant that understands your business. Most of you have done that by now. Just keep with it. Um, someone should be helping you with what you can write off. And, you know, a lot of you food bloggers have your cabinet with just your ingredients that you write off. Um, 
make sure you have one of those. Social Made Simple, I always love to plug a female entrepreneur who's a small business. Social Made Simple is Stephanie Mullen. Every month, if you're in her subscription, she gives you a month's worth of Instagram content to use in any way you want. On your blog, on Instagram, it's professionally done images that just have that great look. It's wonderful, particularly for people who are like real estate agents, hairdressers, people who want to be on social. So if, if you guys are doing social dentists, chiropractors. I know a lot of you guys do social for people like that. This is a great way to keep their content going and it not always being about their business. It's a really great um, tool. Insperity. If you're looking to give your, um, there's two, Insperity and Trinet are the two I'm familiar with. If you're looking to give your employees benefits, 401k, we were able to get health insurance through it. Um, it was amazing. It does cost money, but they do everything for you and they keep you updated on HR laws. Um, and you basically go in and end up as kind of an employee of theirs, but you get your health insurance, you get your 401k. Um, I have life insurance, I have all of it through them, which isn't something we, we would have been able to offer when we were a much smaller company. Um, I talked a little bit about lawsuits, support system. Having a support system is so important. Um, I'm gonna really try not to cry. I know I go from like highs to lows, you should try living with me. Um, when I was 37 and my mom was 57, she died at her desk at work. And I know, it's like the saddest thing, you guys. Um, but it, it stopped me dead in the middle of my business. And if I had not had a tribe, I hate that word, not, I don't wanna use that word. If I had not had a group of people, a support system to be there for me and to keep my business going, I would have had to start over. Um, you, for those of you that have been there, that have experienced a loss like that, that just pulls the rug out from under you, it is so important that you have things in place, people in place. Even if you're a photographer and there's another photographer you know, and to say like, hey, would you be interested in doing something like, if I ever need you, just have a sheet ready with passwords and everything to give them because I'm telling you, your life stops and you cannot see in front of you. And to have your business, people are happy to do it. They want to be there for you in that moment. And I do want to say this too about grief as someone who's in business. People are always like, oh, throw yourself back into work. That doesn't work for everybody. And I needed six months. I know that sounds like a lot. Um, I wasn't myself. And the job and the role that I hold in my company is very much of a leader and someone who they can come to and someone who they know is present and has tough conversations and I was not able to do that. And so they gave me the grace and time to back out of the business. Um, and then I got, you know, knocked up and it's to say a much happier version of an unexpected life experience. But I took four months off when I had my daughter. And that is a luxury, it shouldn't be, but it is. It's a luxury in this country to take four months off and my team was happy to step in. But I do think you need, to, you need to surround yourself with people and have a plan, have everything written out. Your editorial calendar, like who you use for what, passwords, so that you can print that and hand it to someone so that things can keep going. And you, you will get back, your life will come back, I promise. And, and give yourself the time. But really shitty things happen to great, great people. And you want to just know in the back of your mind you're prepared for this business to keep going. Does anybody follow Lindsay's letters online? Yeah, so her daughter um, fell recently and has a traumatic brain injury and her life has obviously had to stop and it has been so moving watching her team come in and continue her business. And that's why you have a team. That's why you pour into other people. That's why when you have a small business, people are more than a paycheck. And why you remember their birthdays and you, you cheer for them when they have babies and all those things, because we need it. You, this is not an island we can function on alone. Um, I talked about no thank you. I just wanna say it again, right? Family, bank account, soul, it's no. My friend Danielle, she has a great one. If it's not a hell yeah, it's a no, right? Um, so last thing, ask for what you want every day. Ask it of yourself, ask it of everyone around you. I'm gonna ask you for something I want. 
If you thought this was helpful, I would love a review on LinkedIn. I have to rebuild my speaking career after taking three years off with a baby, and I, I really need the reviews to help me get more gigs. If you know of anybody doing an empowerment, um, women's empowerment, or somewhere that you think I would be a good fit, I would love your recommendation. Um, so I'm gonna ask for it. That's it. So thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs>